Do you like light? Electricity, maybe? I mean, it only powers every facet of modern society, from our satellite GPS to electrical grids and the phone you're using to watch this video. And yet, this light, this digital energy that powers modern life, might be at risk from the source of all energy, the sun. Scientists have detected a hole in the sun. This hole is the size of 60 Earths, and it has opened up on the sun's surface, and it's been classified as a coronal hole. Should we be terrified? <laughs> Anyway, here's the story. <laughs> Last December, this thing made some crazy headlines. A gigantic hole in the sun 60 times the size of Earth. What truly is this thing, and does it pose any danger to Earth? As it turns out, the more you know about the sun, the more you know about just how precarious our situation as the third planet from it truly is. This opening is what's called a coronal hole, which is essentially a slightly cooler patch of the sun's corona layer only visible in the extreme ultraviolet wavelength of light. They happen more than you think, and come in a variety of sizes. And because the sun's typically stable magnetic field is bent when these patches open, large quantities of solar wind can escape into space. And this gigantic hole just so happened to coincide with some of the largest solar storms recorded over the past decade. Parts of South America experienced widespread radio blackouts, and more than a few auroras probably found their way across your social media feed. These solar storms are nothing that we haven't seen before, but history harbors some much more concerning examples of our own star reminding us who's really in charge of the solar system, some of which might foreshadow a short-circuited future that's closer than you read. In July of 2012, Earth was nearly struck by what's called a coronal mass ejection, or CME for short. These solar storms are unfathomably massive explosions of magnetized plasma ejected from the sun. They're not uncommon, but every once in a while, a truly exceptional one will be sent toward Earth. These storms carry ionizing radiation, meaning charged particles carrying enough energy to pierce through DNA and cause mild cellular damage. But the real risks come to electronics. CMEs can short-circuit our entire society on a global scale in a matter of minutes, and the one that nearly struck us in 2012 was one of the most powerful ever recorded. The storm missed Earth by nine days in its orbital period, meaning if the Earth had been just a tad bit slower, this thing would have struck us. And there is a 12% chance that another one of that size will happen in the next 10 years. The results, while not world-ending, would be catastrophic. Every corner of the globe, every industry relies on technology in critical ways, and almost all of it would be put at risk. Worldwide power outages, the loss of countless satellites that we depend on for everything from GPS to basic communication, medical, financial, industrial, and military systems would all be affected. Estimated trillions would be wiped away. Not just from the sheer electrical infrastructure damage, but the potential irrecoverable loss of large fractions of the internet itself. It will be global chaos not seen since the Second World War. That storm in 2012 wasn't the first calamity we've avoided, and it won't be the last. There was an even bigger one, in fact the largest in recorded history, in 1859 called the Carrington Event, which brought auroras as far south as the Caribbean and Mexico. There weren't any electronics to fry, but early telegraphs reportedly caught fire and shocked their operators. The problem with solar storms, unlike fringe disasters like an asteroid strike or nuclear war, is that, statistically speaking, one is guaranteed to hit us eventually. The question is, how prepared will we be? And in this, we have some good news. While there's nothing we can do to ultimately stop solar flares short of destroying the sun itself, humans are smart and we have developed remedies that could come into play. Public and private utilities companies with connections to the electrical grids that power so much else are the natural first bastions of defense. Many have built-in capacitor banks, which function like batteries to absorb and dissipate excess energy. Electricity-negating structures called Faraday cages can help as well, redirecting currents away from vital components. But the best way to prepare for a solar storm, much like many things in life, is also the simplest. Turn off the grid. Advanced warning systems designed by space agencies and energy companies that can serve as proactive protection rather than reactive. There are entire satellite networks and deep space probes designed solely for this purpose. To study and monitor the sun so that we humans on Earth can take educated actions to protect ourselves. And foster a future where our descendants don't have to be afraid of the dark. While solar storms are a real threat to modern life, I feel that it's important to educate the public on those risks so that we can all be that much more prepared in case one strikes. If you like this style of content from me, don't hesitate to follow or go check out my social medias in the link below.